Welcome. The title of my message today is The Kingdom of Heaven, and what a, a kingdom it truly is. Welcome to Prophecy Countdown. I'm Pastor Ken. We provide two updates each week on Sundays and Wednesdays on Prophecy Countdown. Uh, on Sundays, our message premieres at 1 p.m., and today's message, The Kingdom of Heaven, is on two parables uh, that we'll be talking about that you should be familiar with. On Wednesdays, our updates are prophecy related. Uh, now, we love answering your questions. So if you have a question, in fact, this is how we get the content uh, typically for our Wednesday messages is uh, you, the viewing and listening audience. Uh, send us an email at prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. That's prophecycountdownpodcast at gmail.com. And we respond to all of those inquiries. So as I mentioned, my message today is called The Kingdom of Heaven, and we'll be looking at, at just three verses uh, that actually contain two parables. Matthew chapter 13, verses 40 through, through 46. Um, and again, there are two parables that are referenced. Likely you have them subtitled in your Bible. Uh, my Bible, for example, says the parable of the hidden treasure, and then right underneath in verse 45, it says the parable of the pearl of great price. So we'll start by reading these three verses, and then we'll talk a little bit about what Jesus is referring to as he's giving us a glimpse of the kingdom of heaven. We'll start off in verse 44, the parable of the hidden treasure. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it, goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. And then verse 45, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Now, Jesus had just finished explaining to the disciples the meaning of the parable of the wheat and the tares. That was just last week and a few verses before. Well, we talked about it. These, these two parables that follow are a continuation of his discussion on the kingdom of heaven. He expressed truths about the kingdom in the four previous parables in Matthew. I'll list them. The parable of the sower followed by the parable of the wheat and the tares. And then two uh, similar parables, the parable of the mustard seed and the parable of the leaven. So now we have these two parables and we see that they're a pair. These two parables make it clear that they're teaching a very similar lesson. Uh, we're likely going to assume that they give a similar insight, a, a, glance of under, a glimpse of understanding uh, something about the kingdom of heaven. However, what we find in these two parables that we're talking about today is an interesting disagreement among many Bible teachers, pastors, and scholars regarding the true meaning of this parable. Now, actually, that's, that's not a problem. And actually, it's a teachable opportunity for all of us because while we know that these two parables explain the kingdom of heaven, that's the purpose of Jesus giving us these parables, and Jesus wants us to have ears that hear and a mind that is receptive, not everyone is going to understand the parables in quite the same manner. Uh, the thing is, is that these parables teach us something, and that is it's that there may be many, many applications, even though the parable has one specific meaning. So let's take a, take a look at the applications here. One of the obvious implications is that there's something of great value spoken of here. If the kingdom is, 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 is a subject matter, then the kingdom is of great value. So much value that it's like a man who finds a treasure hidden in a field and goes and sells everything, or uh, the, the merchant that was looking for pearls and finds a pearl of great price and sells everything he has in order to acquire the one pearl. Uh, the kingdom of God, knowing God and the opportunity to follow Jesus is, is worth it all. Worth it all, and this is definitely one of the applications. However, at the same time, perhaps based on what we read in the other parables, it is actually Jesus that is taking the action. I mean, think about this for a minute. After all, uh, it was the parable of the sower, and who was the one that was sowing seed? It was, it was Jesus, it was, it was God sowing the seed. In the parable of the wheat and the tares, 
It's Jesus that is the one that sends out the angels at the end of the age. So if we look at this parable from that aspect, that it's Jesus doing the action, and remember, Jesus is the king. Every kingdom has a, has a king, not a president or not a prime minister, but it's the king. So often we'll see Jesus in these parables about the kingdom of heaven. So if it's Jesus is the one that gives up all, sells all in order to acquire the, the hidden treasure in the field or the pearl of great price, that means something about, about us, doesn't it? And I want you to, if you're not sitting down, perhaps you need to sit down because maybe you've never really understood this before. Hang on to something, my brothers and sisters, because here's the meaning of the parable is that you are the hidden treasure. You are the pearl of great price. I, I realize that the scriptures clearly tell us that as followers of Jesus Christ, we are to forsake all. We are to pick up our cross and follow him. I certainly understand that I embrace him. But at the same time, who is giving up more? You know, it's kind of like the, the old joke about the, the pig and the chicken. Between the pig and the chicken, who contributes more to your breakfast? Well, perhaps you like it better this way. One of the songs that we, one of the old classic songs in the church, I remember singing it uh, as a child. Um, and it's a wonderful song. It's, Oh, How He Loves You and Me. And remember the lyrics go this way, Oh, How He Loves You and Me. He gave His life. What more could He give? Oh, How He Loves You. Oh, How He Loves Me. Oh, How He Loves You and Me. You know, I believe the reason this interpretation of these two parables that Jesus is the one that is, is seeking and we are the, the treasure, this is difficult for us to, to, to embrace. And I think this is why many theologians just haven't embraced it this way uh, over the years. And I'm not saying they're wrong, I'm saying this is the way that I take a look at it, is, is because we, we typically don't understand our worth. But remember, our worth is actually determined uh, by the Savior. The world evaluates a person on the basis of their career, their appearance, the money that they have in the bank, and the kind of cars they drive, the neighborhood they live in, uh, the way they dress. But, but Christ is not like that. Uh, Christ sees us as, as priceless, as something that he is that, that's so worthy that he's willing to, to die for. He's willing to die, he's willing to give his sacrifice of his life, the greatest kind of love there possibly is, is that a man would lay down his life for a, another. And the Bible tells us that it is God that pursues us. Did you know that? In fact, the Bible clearly says, both in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament, that no one pursues God. In, in Romans chapter 3, the Apostle Paul tells us this. This is verse 10. He says, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who truly seeks God. So if you overlay that on top of this parable, who's the one that's doing the, the seeking? Uh, it, it's God. God is the one that pursues us. If it, It's God that pursues us, and he doesn't leave us and there's a good thing. He doesn't leave us in imperfection. He doesn't leave us in unrighteousness. He, his love, the love of the Father, and the love that's expressed through Jesus exposes um, our flaws, our sin. It's like turning a, a light on, like the two lights I have in the studio. It, it turns a light on and it exposes who we truly are, but he doesn't leave us there. He, he transforms us. He exchanges our unrighteousness, the Bible says, for his Righteousness, it's the, it's the great transformation. If you recall the parable of the wheat and the tares in verse 43 of, that, of the same chapter, chapter 13 that we're in, this is what it says. It says, then, this is after, at the end of the age, after the angels come and separate the wicked from the righteous, it says, then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. You see, at that time in the coming kingdom is when we'll truly understand our, our value. These two parables today give us a, a hint at the value that God sees in us. This is why Jesus went to the cross to redeem us. We remember, we are his creation. 
We are his creation. We stumbled and fell with Adam, but at the same time, God redeems us. He saw us, we, he saw us um, uh, still flawed and, and still uh, weighed down with sin. But Jesus redeemed us. He paid the price uh, to be able to, to, to redeem us. Don't, don't ever think that, that there's cheap grace. No, uh, Jesus paid the ultimate price. And here's the thing. Verse 43 says that when Jesus is returning, his glory will shine like the morning sun. That's, uh, that's the glory we'll see in the coming kingdom. And let me tell you, my friends, Jesus is returning soon. The, uh, the signs are all around us. So I want you to keep watching. I want you to keep believing. And we'll see you again here real soon. Let's pray. So, Father, we want to thank you, Lord, for, for giving us this opportunity to share the gospel with those people that are, are viewing this on YouTube as well as listening to it through many, many, many different pod, podcast uh, engines. We pray, Lord, for the people in Israel. We know, and as well as the people in Gaza, as the enemies of Israel are determined to eradicate the Jewish people. Uh, we know, Lord, that you have a plan, and we pray that all may come to faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, who died in our place and took the punishment for our sins. And not only that, but he rose again, and he's coming back again soon. So, Father, just we pray that you bless the listening audience. Give them peace in Jesus' name. Nearly every day, it's common to see, read, or hear something about the end of the world, the apocalypse, or end times. Author and pastor Kenneth Baer's The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom zooms in and breaks down biblical prophecy as it relates to Jesus' imminent return and the coming seven-year period, including the Great Tribulation. Available in both paperback and Kindle versions. Get your copy on Amazon or at Barnes & Noble and select Christian bookstores. The title again is The Apocalypse and Coming Kingdom. You can also find it listed by author Kenneth Baer. Get your copy today. Thank you for joining us on Prophecy Countdown with Pastor Ken Baer. Don't leave without first sharing the latest episode with your friends. Be sure to join us again for the latest updates on Prophecy Countdown.